and just letting the people in from the waiting room. I think most people have joined now, so um, I think I'll kick off and um, just say welcome. Thank you very much for joining us now for this second um, webinar in the series for um, our MAP Ambridge Craig Avon Council's Food for Thought. It's great to see you all. Uh, I'm just letting a few more people in. This webinar is, um, is being recorded, so you can keep your camera on or your camera off, whatever you like. Um, please feel free to, um, because this is like a meeting rather than a webinar, please feel free to use the chat box to ask any questions you would like. Um, and we'll try to get um, through all of those at the end and have a good a good discussion like we had last week, which would be brilliant. Um, so this evening we've got Kieran McHugh, who very kindly joined last week just as a guest, but Kieran works with the Conservation Volunteers in Northern Ireland. Um, he's great at, I think we probably have Chris as well. Um, I can't see him on this list, but I'm sure he is. So um, these guys are the experts when it comes to to grow and stuff and, and teaching people how to do that. So we're delighted to have Karen with us tonight, um, who's prepared a wee presentation on, um, we're just gonna do a quick recap on the whole seed sowing thing, um, and then thinning out and potting on, and some tips on watering, because that seems to be a question that people ask all the time, um, you know, how, when do you need to water and how much? Um, I've, and I've been working with children in schools for the last sort of week and a half and they're like, do we have to water every day? And I go, no, 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 we don't. <laughs> um, and we'll also cover um, hardening off and planting out. And I think Karen is go also going to cover a wee bit about um, plants for free. You know, if you, you know, the way um, you would buy, um, pots of herbs and stuff in the supermarket and you take them home and they kind of die immediately. Um, well, it's kind of, you know, how do you stop that happening? And actually it's not your fault. So, um, so Karen, can you share, you want to go on ahead and, and start with your presentation, please? Can everybody see that? Let's see if I can get it enlarged. Yes, brilliant. Right. Can everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. Yep, great. Fantastic. Okay, so um, like Jilly said, um, we're, we're going to start off with a little PowerPoint presentation on sowing seeds, planting them outside. That's better. Has so, uh, so first of all, you need something to sew into. So um, we, we try and recycle pots as much as we can. Um, a friend of mine recently, uh, it was last week really, we got a polytunnel and we was using the re recycled pots. But what he, he did was a schoolboy error. He forgot to check the underneath of his pot and clean them properly and he brought a slug in which then ate the contents of his plant pot. So even though we're recycling everything, always be vigilant and check for any pests that you could be bringing indoors to your, your produce. Um, I'm playing with the computer. So there's a few um, that we, we've used successfully here, a few pictures of them. You know, normally these items would be thrown into your landfill site, which we're all trying to save the, the planet. So we don't want to do this really. So, you know, yogurt pots, used disposable tea and coffee cups. They seem to be the new Coca-Cola cans now that you used to pick up everywhere. It's, it's all tea and coffee cups, um, ice cream or margarine tubs. Uh, again, um, when you go to the supermarket, sometimes you get the, um, the mushrooms in those little containers, you know, maybe they, they're great. They, they actually have the holes already in for you. 
Um, we're going to look at compost as well. You, you can buy your own compost in. Um, New Leaf is one that we use there. Um, but I prefer to make my own. Not everybody has the facilities. so And I don't get enough, to be honest. I do have to buy some in. The local authority as well, the council, they, they do a great um, system where they recycle people's household um, waste wherever possible and you can get them and that tends to be quite inexpensive as well if you can get it from your local authority it's all great stuff it all all feeds the soil and feeds the plants um excuse me if i'm going too fast i, I tend to rabbit on but if you want to ask any questions later on that'll be fine i can go back to anything um, we're looking at seeds as well. Um, I like to harvest my own seeds if I can. Um, if I have uh, lettuce growing, I tend to leave one or two that are good and I'd leave them to, to go to flower and go to seed. That way I know how fresh the seeds are and I know what variety I'm going to get. And if I've sown quite a few at the beginning of the season and I find one that is really successful, that would be the one that I'm, I'd keep the seeds for. You can also um, pass on seeds, start a, a seed group. Um, further on down the country, there's quite a few groups that have, um, they, they leave them, they have a, a, a point in which they would leave seeds and somebody else would come and then swap their seeds for them. That's a, another great way. A, a lot of allotment societies do this and it's very successful. Um, so that's your, your seed exchange. And obviously you can buy them. Um, we, we tend to find that um, there's a shortage this year of seeds. A lot of people have been trying to get seeds and been unsuccessful. Um, like Jilly said, watering is a big, big factor into whether or not your seedlings will survive or not. A lot of um, people make the mistake of overwatering. Um, a good tip, um, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see it. I'll I'll show you later when I'm not showing the um, the uh, PowerPoint. But I would always test the seed the seed the pot first. You know, feel the compost. If it's really dry, then I'd I'd water. Uh, another good is an indication is to look around the outside of the compost where it meets with the pot, and if you find a big gap there, then that's another indication that it's ready for watering. But again, I wouldn't overwater it. You know, I, I like to use the recycled bottles because I can gauge just how much water I'm putting in with the seedlings rather than a big watering can that you can buy. It's an also another way of recycling and save something else from going into the um, landfill site. So here's the three, well, sorry, four stages there that, um, that I would use to to start my seedlings off. First of all, I would find an appropriate container or pot. I'd fill it with the organic compost-free, compost-free, peat-free compost, I do apologize. Slow down, Kieran. So yeah, so what I'm looking for is a nice peat-free compost, as organic as I can get it. If I can't produce my own, then I'll buy it in. I like to water first, especially if I'm using very fine seeds. That looks like lettuce seeds that I have there and they're very fine, you can't see them. And the problem is once you've distributed the seeds or broadcast them onto the surface of the soil, when you water, you, there's a good tendency that you spread them out and they, they end up over to the side of the, um, the plant pot that you're using. Um, and then I would cover them, but a lot of the time with a lot of like lettuce seeds as well, they don't need a very heavy covering. They, they like to get the sunlight as much as possible and they're looking for the heat as well. So just a very fine covering. A uh, rule of thumb normally with a lot of seeds is um, twice, you know, with peas especially, is twice their, um, their depth. But with small seeds like these, I would just broadcast them on the top and put a very light covering on the top of them. You could always water again if need be, but like I say, I, I tend to water these first because I don't want to scatter the seeds. And um, normally I wouldn't water them again. You know, I would just keep checking, but 
most of the time because I grow mine on my windowsill at home I, I wouldn't need to water them again but keep checking them periodically like I say test the soil give it a, a feel if it's moist don't add water you're more likely to kill a, a seedling with more water than less water this is just um, a pumpkin seed here that I'm I'm doing so it's just to show you again so I've filled the pot I've tampered it down I should have mentioned that what I do is I give it a good tamper down because you get a lot of large air pockets in the compost you want some air pockets because you want some oxygen into the soil but you don't want the very large air pocket so give it a good tap down and then with the the likes of your pumpkin seed you want to put them in so that they're not flat so that the water doesn't settle on them so bury them like i said about twice their depth and then give them a, a good watering there's no point putting them into dry compost and not watering them you, you need to water and then put them in a nice place windowsill ideal now, now we're looking at um, pricking out. So I like to prepare my plant pots first. Again, like I mentioned, I would fill the plant pot, give it a tap down to reduce the larger air pockets, um, make a, a hole in the center, maybe with a pencil. I, I wouldn't advise using your finger. A lot of people use their fingers, but nowadays we know that we should be wearing gloves. There is some, oh, well, a lot of microorganisms in the soil. And if you've not had your tetanus jab or up to date with it, you know, you are risking um, problems there with, with any soil products. So use a pencil or a, a dibber or um, even your, your label that you've got, you know, just make a hole in the center deep enough to get the whole root. I have got um, a few plants with me, so I'll show you what I mean by the, the long stem and the root that wants to be buried. Also, you want to be picking it up by the cotyledon, the, the, um, the leaflet, the very first leaf. It isn't a true leaf, but I would always either hold that leaf if I have to, rather than touching the stem of the, the seedling or um, crushing the roots if possible. Um, I'll try to explain that to you a bit better later on. But all along the stem is um, some very soft tissue and hairs that are uh, are forming the roots really of the plant so what i'm saying is to gently prise your your seedling from the compost a lot of your seed trays might have a hole in the bottom that you can actually push the whole root ball up with which makes it easier to plant so like i say there if you hold the leaflet the first true leaf avoid touching the stem and then bury bury the the roots but it's important as well to actually firm them in a little because you want the roots to be making as much contact with the soil as possible to make strong, healthy roots. That way, they, if they're making contact with the soil, they can suck up the valuable nutrients and moisture that they need. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier on watering advice. So use your finger to test the compost to see if it's damp. If it's, if it's okay, don't water. Um, water only when the plants need it. As you can see there, there's a few pictures there of how it looks when it's overwatered or underwatered and a healthy plant. If you've got leaves that are going yellow and dropping off, it's an indication that it's underwatered, but it's also an indication that it's being overwatered. We mentioned, or I mentioned the air pockets of oxygen. They, if the water's waterlogged the roots can't get any oxygen and they just rot off and die so that that's the problem with over watering um, i also try and water from below which encourages the roots to then go down and search for the water or the moisture and that helps to develop um, good strong roots um, Jilly mentioned about shop bought um, herbs um, as you can see here, I've got a series of pictures. So the first picture there shows the, the plant, that's basil that I bought there from one of the local supermarkets. And I then identified a good gap in the roots. And with a good sharp knife, I cut down probably three quarters of the root ball, not all the way down because I don't want to cut myself. Um, and then just gently 
prise it apart. Um, I think with that little pot there, it cost me, I think it was two pound, but I took four plants from it. So that means I could either sell on one of the plants or grow them on. I like to, later on in the season, I do like to plant basil with my tomatoes. But as you can see, that's, that's what we've got there. I got four plants from the one plant. I suppose, and I suppose, Karen, um, if I could just put in there, it's worth it's worth mentioning that um, you, can, you can do that with um, supermarket bought herbs and stuff because they over sow, basically, mm. don't they? they want the pot to look really, really full and vibrant and green. So actually, they, put, they probably put 10 times more seeds in the pot than you need. So by the time you get it, it's actually used up all the nutrition. So, um, and that's why, you know, people people get them home and you put them on the windowsill and you pick a few bits off and before you know it, they've died. And I think it's just because they're so congested. But if you do what Karen's suggesting there, just divide it and, and divide them out and put them into some fresh compost, they should kick off and thrive again, Karen, shouldn't they? Yes. Yeah. Like you say, yeah, a lot of them are done by machines now and... They have a set amount of seeds that just fills the top of the plant pot and they just they just strip that little po little pocket of soil that they have of, of all the nutrients so mm -hmm. once you've put them into some nice fresh compost you're adding more nutrients to it so they then live that little bit longer and once they've grown that bit more you can then split them again and move them on that way you're creating even more plants and you're helping helping it to survive more by adding more nutrients to it because they are a greedy, greedy little plant for nutrients. There's a few more pictures. So as you can see there, I've split them and then I split them again. But if you can just see in the pictures, there's, there's quite a lot of roots still there with, with them. And then of course, remember to water them. Um, what you get is um, what we call, we used to call transplant shock. So if you've got a wet root ball that you've watered and then you put it into dry compost, the dry compost can suck the moisture from the root ball of your new plant. So always water it once you've planted them all. Um, yeah, we mentioned hardening off. Seedlings need time to adjust. If you can imagine if, if you've gone from a nice warm house into a, a cold environment or vice versa, you know, you're going to feel the difference. And that's what does a lot of damage to some plants. I see a lot of camellias this time of year and the frost has made the flowers go all brown and horrible. It's, it's not the frost, it's the actual thawing out of the, that causes the damage. So what we're looking for is to put them into like a coal frame or if you could cover them over with something so that you you're um you're not exposing them to the to the high winds and the, the big shock of the cold temperature really and you know with the wind they're losing a lot of moisture as well um a lot of them are not used to direct sunlight as well so you, you know you have to be wary of that too so gradually expose them to the outdoor conditions over a, a small period of time. Maybe I've put down there two to three weeks before you want the plant to plant them out. Put them in a coal frame if you've got them or a polytunnel. I'm fortunate to have a polytunnel at work so I can take them from my windsill, put them into the polytunnel and then harden them off. Okay. Yeah. Um, just sorry, I'm, I'm just going to butt in there again. And um, we have a question from Gillian Casey. Um, asking what's a cold frame so I suppose when you're a gardener you just um, you expect everybody would know what that is but yeah. um, as, as you see down in the bottom corner there that little red box that's just a little homemade cold frame so it's it's stopping the plants from hitting you know there's no high winds or cold cold winds go into it but what you can do is on a hot sunny day like we have lift the lid off the box to expose it to some of the sunlight and some of the heat from the sun and then at night close it down again so you're you're um dictating really the temperatures that it's getting 
to some degree. You're not leaving it out into the elements until it gets hardened off. And then when the temperature warms up, you can then plant them outside once they're ready for it. And, and Karen, I suppose if at home, you know, you can you can make yourself a cold frame with, you know, maybe using an old um, like crate or box with a sheet of perspex over the top or some clear yeah. pine or something. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and you know, again, that's... you're recycling something, so it's not going to the, the landfill site. Even just a few old bricks, you know, and then, like Jilly says, a, a piece of plastic over the top doesn't have to be expensive or, you know, tidy, really. It just has to be something that works. OK, so planting outside is best done on a cloudy day or it's a time of the day when, the, when it's not too, too hot or too sunny because you don't want it to you don't want your plants to um, lose all that moisture too early. Um, always water your, your seedlings in well once you've planted them and ensure that the water and ensure that you water them thoroughly when done. Again, this is that um, uh, transplant shock. You know, you're putting in nice moist root balls into a dry soil. So you want to give them the best chance. So water them so that the, the dry soil isn't sucking the moisture from your, your plant root ball. Okay, uh, I'll take any questions. That's great. Thanks. Thanks very much, Karen. We have I'll have a question actually. Um, Tracy has asked on the chat. Um, so Tracy has said I've been adding coffee grounds into my soil. Um, how do I stop them from going mouldy? Um, well, if you dig them in well, um, I'm guessing that you've just been leaving them on the surface so that you know the the air's been getting to it, but. It, if you dig it in, it doesn't have to be a, a heavy dig. The trouble with doing a heavy dig is you, you could be then disturbing any weed seeds that's underneath. So just a light digging in, really, just so that you're mixing it in well with the soil. Um, and then leave the worms to do the rest, really. They'll, they'll, their job is to move the, um, the nutrients and the, to make drainage in the soil. So let them do their work. Okay, that's very good. And um, I suppose, Tracy, I don't know whether you're um, using the coffee grounds for uh, nutrition or maybe to stop the slugs, because that does help too. But um, I think even if you, um, like sometimes I put coffee grounds on the top um, and if they do go a wee bit mouldy, just sort of ruffle them up a wee bit. Because the slugs, actually slugs and snails do really not like crawling over the top of them. So that's a good tip as well. Um, we've got a question from Bernadette. Um, Harvey wants to know, why do I need organic compost? It's about three times more expensive. Well, I think it's, it's, uh, it's not so much organic, but maybe peat free Bernadette is... Um, but, and actually, no, it used to be peat free was like organic compost is really, really hard to come by. So I think when Kieran refers to organic, he's, you know, he's maybe referring to vegetable matter or um, or homemade compost or something. So, you know, you don't you don't need to get organic compost. But if you're getting compost, try to go peat free because um it's a really important habitat and it, and it only peat lays down at like one millimeter per year so but the really good um thing is that companies like this year board Lamona have um said they're not going to extract any more peat so and i think i was in a webinar the other day um when somebody somebody in england from soil association said that uh being q's own brand you know that like three for a ten or whatever it is um is all peat free now and a new recipe so it works really good and um and that doesn't even you know it doesn't you have to look in the back of the bag to say that so so yeah don't um don't be be getting stressed out about having to buy organic because actually i live where you all live around armana and i don't i don't know anywhere that you could buy that so um 
what have we got? Uh, also, Heather has commented that um, read the slugs eggshells broken up are a good um, a good tip for that too. Around your plants, what do you think about that, Karen? Yeah, and it also feeds the plants too. Once it breaks down, you know the eggshells. They 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 don't like sharp. You know, even sharp sand is, is something that's well worth putting around your plants if you can't get it. If you can't get the eggshells, but yeah. I mean, eggshells will also break down and feed feed the own plants as well as keeping the slugs at bay. Sure. Um, we have another question here from Fiona. Um, she's asking, if I'm growing peas in large pots, um, which compost is it best to use or does it need any extra treatments? Um, well, I would, again, I would say, you know, any good general pig free if you can compost should be good enough for peas because uh, they do fix nitrogen from the air but um would you add would you add any fertilizer in with those like yeah yeah you can get um you can get a nice seaweed um dust that we would put on you know you can get that from most garden centers or even if you know somebody who has poultry you can make your own chicken manure and add that to it as well you know, try and find stuff that you're not going, it's not going to be costly toward to you. And when the nettles come up, I've mentioned before about the nettle soup, you know, just add that um, mixture of that with your water and feed your, your beans and peas with that as well. Sure. Fiona's also saying, um, also, what's the best to grow tomatoes in? Um, last year, she had lots and her tomatoes failed and she just doesn't know what she did wrong. Um, so what do you think about tomatoes then, Karen? Grow oh. bags or open soil or do you chop up some of your, your nettles and put them in the planting hole? Or Yeah, you could, there's lots of things. I would, like you say, um, you can put the nettles in, mix it in, like break it down. But a lot of the time with um, tomatoes is they are very greedy. And at least once a week, I would feed them with either comfrey soup or nettle soup. Does everybody know what we mean by this nettle soup and comfrey soup? What, what, what I do is I would chop them up, gather my nettles, chop it all up, put it into a big bucket. And then when the bucket's full to the top, I would add water to it. And then I'd like to cover it over because it does smell. It smells really bad. And put that away somewhere in the garden, away from the house. And then leave that for say three weeks and then strain it. And then I'd mix the solution from, it's normally about one part of that up to 10 parts of water in my watering can. And once a week, just feed them. And it's the best organic food you can get that costs nothing. And, you know, there's lots of products out there in garden centers that you could spend a fortune on tomato food, but you won't beat the nettle or comfrey. Yeah, yeah, brilliant tip there, um, Kieran. As you say, and um, it's 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 all for free. Um, it can smell pretty rich, sure. can't it, whenever sure. you're making it, but <laughs> but that just means it's it, it's good. Um, it's Joan, working. <laughs> it is working. Jones also, um, she's asking, do we go ahead now and, and um, so everything they received in their packs as she hasn't started yet? Um, I say yes, absolutely. Don't panic. You. You've plenty of time, as we say, the weather is, the thing is, if you, you can start your seeds off inside, as Karen said, his, his windows, every windowsill in his house is coming down with baby plants, I would say at the minute, but it's kind of where they go after that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we always need to be mindful that, um, you know, you, most people don't have a greenhouse or a polyton, especially if you're, if you're new to the whole thing. So, it's, it does no harm to wait into April and then sow your seeds then and then you can prick them out and bring them on, harden them off, you know, get them used to the outdoors temperature um, gradually instead of having loads and loads of seedlings everywhere and, and starting to panic and not having anywhere to go with them. So uh, another question, uh, Mary. Can Trump I just say as well there that although you've got, all those seeds, you don't want to sow them all at once. You was given too many seeds. So just sow a few out of the packet 
and keep the packet because if you sow them all now, you won't have any to sow later on. So just sow a few now and then if they don't work, you've got a few more to sow. And then when they work, you harvest them, then you've got still some more. That way you're going to have lettuces or tomatoes throughout the summer. So, you know, every couple of weeks, sow a few more. And that way you're going to have a few all over the, the summer months rather than sowing them all now and then running out and having to either buy some more seeds in or um, buying produce. So I, I wouldn't sow them all now. I'd, I'd save some. Open it up the bottom of the packet so you've got all the um, instructions on the packet there still, but just a few. Like um, Jilly said, the, the supermarkets, they put too many in the top of the pocket pot. So just put a few in, put them pots on your windowsill, and then a few weeks' time, sow a few more. That's a really good point, Kieran. Actually, yeah, yes, you're, you're absolutely 100% right. Um, I kind of thought, meant in my head, yes, yeah. you know some of all the varieties now, but yes, don't do yeah, don't Just a few. Your, your whole packet. Um, so Mary Therese is saying um, she's noticed a few bits of mould growing on the top of her seed pots. Um, is this harmful to the seedlings? And she thinks they might be a wee bit too wet. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's because you're watering from the top. If you know, if you could in, get into the habit of watering from underneath, even if it's just putting a saucer underneath your pot, but there's nothing to stop you just scuffering, scuffering the top of the plant pot, or even add a bit more compost to it. That would get rid of the mold. But um, it's just it's it's just the air, you know, yeah. reacting to the soil. So I wouldn't worry too much. What was that word you used? Scuffering. Scuffering. scuffering, yeah, it's what we used that to use on the bowling greens. Doesn't it? <laughs> Scratch, it? Scratching, scuffering, scuffering, ready for the, the new seed to go down. Yeah, okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course, Alex. Uh, last week we touched um, on growing potatoes in containers and uh, I got some potatoes in the pack and there's two ways that I've that was discussed. One was putting uh, about four inches of compost in the base and then putting three or four potatoes in mm -hmm. and then just covering them. And then as the shoots come through, build them up. Yes. And then the other one I've heard is that you put the four inches in, you put your potatoes in and you fill it to the top. Is there, is there a better, which of the two ways would Kieran recommend? I've just lost my screen at the moment. The green savers come on, but I, I would do the first. I, as soon as I seen the green coming up, then I add, I add more soil or compost to it. And then you'll see them coming up again. And then you add more to it until you've filled it up really. And the so each time, can... each time it pops its head through the, 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 the compost or the soil, you put more on. Yes, yes. And the beauty of the containers is you can get your hand in and feel the potatoes and take them out when you require them rather than digging them all up. You know, if you only want one or two, you just get your hand in there and you feel and take them that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, Maria is asking, um, do you need to plant out or can you just grow in pots? Uh, well, Maria, absolutely, you can... You can grow everything in, in pots or, or not even pots, even, um, you know, grow bags or old compost bags or things, anything that will hold soil that um, has a bit of drainage in it is good too. Uh, Ronan saying that Lidl were doing good value peat free compost last week, so that's nice to know. Uh, Shelley agrees with that. Um, Tracy is asking, uh, Karen, can I collect seaweed? off the beach and put it on my veg, uh, fruit and veg, um, and does she need to dig it in? Uh, you, you need to wash it thoroughly, get all that salt off it. That, that's the best tip I'll tell you. And then I get the old shears, uh, I'm showing you with the hand, and just chop it up really fine, as fine as you can get it. And then, you know, that, that'll make a great, um, either put it on your, your compost heap, or you can layer it on the top of your soil. But the important thing is to get all that salt off first, really 
really give it a wash down because the salt might deter some of the slugs, but it, it can also damage your, your plants and your soil. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Tracy's also saying with uh, same with banana skins, you can leave them in a bucket of water uh, to feed the plants. Yeah. So yeah, that's you can yeah you can do that with homemade compost too, can't you? Mm. Uh, Joan's asking, what about a conservatory? Are there any uh, suitable for growing in a conservatory, um, or has it to be outside? Well, I'd say, Joan, no, yeah, you can, you could probably grow everything in those packets in a conservatory, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, some people, people who live in flats, you know, they haven't got a garden, but, you know, they've got plant pots or something that they can plant in, you know, even like um, Jilly said, grow bags. A anything will grow indoors as long as you keep a check on it, keep, make sure that, you know, the, the soil hasn't dried out too much. And as long as you can give it a feed as well, every now and again, they'll grow indoors. Yep, brilliant, thank you. Um, Heather has given us a recipe for, um, for, with garlic, I take this is for a wee pesticide, with garlic cloves um, and two large cloves of garlic crushed to two pints of boiling water. Um, boil it up, let it cool, and then sieve to collect the liquid. Um, and you can use two tablespoons into 10 litres of water. Um, and slugs don't like that. So that's a good, yeah, crushed garlic, boiled up, um, should keep the slugs off. Uh, Pauline's asking, is it too early for first potatoes? Um, I No, Pauline, I would say you, you could do early potatoes now. I would usually, I would have usually always done mine at Easter. Um, so yeah, cause I'm, if, I don't know if you're going to do them in containers or outside um, in raised beds or something, but if you, like Kieran was talking about before, cause we could still get frost and things, whenever the green, green shoots come up, keep covering them over. Um, okay, what, where do we see? Is anybody else any 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 other questions? Do you want me to show you some of these um, seedlings? How to pick out a seedling? I brought a couple. Actually, that'd be great, Karen. Maria, if I could get Maria to work the camera for me, please. Uh, behind every good man, there's a there's a woman. <laughs> these, these are um. This is a, a tomato plant that was planted on. So I'm just going to prise out gently the roots. So as you can see, I'm being very gentle with it. And can you see, I don't know if you can see, I'll put my hand behind. Can you see the lovely roots there? I'm gonna spotlight you, Karen, so we can see you nice and big. Yeah. So I've. And this is what I class as the leaflet. So it's not a true leaf yet. And then I'm going to make a large hole. And I'm going to pop her in and I'm going to push it down, as far down because this stem is going to produce the roots as well. This is what I was saying about the hairs. I'll show you a picture if I can of some of the hairs on it. So I'm going to make a large hole there. And I'm just going to ease it into the hole, cover it up, and firm it in. And then I'll give that a good watering. But, uh, I'm sure this is a very good one here. This is also a tomato plant. This is a little bit older than that one. Can you see on the stem? You probably can't see with the camera. There's some tiny hairs. But the leaf that I'm holding now, that, that is the the cotyledon or the, the leaflet. And if you look at the different shape to these leaves at the top, there we go. They, they're a different shape. They're actually the, the true leaf now of the tomato plant. A lot of people would say to me, should you plant your tomatoes before the true leaf comes on or after? I always do it before they come on. Okay, is that, and what, what, why is that, Karen? just because you think they establish better? 
Yeah, um, the, the, so because I've took them from a so because I've took them from a, a tray of other tomatoes plants, they're all competing for the nutrients. So the sooner I get them into a, a pot of their own and get some some more nutrients into them, there's less competition. So I can then gauge how much water I'm going to give them. So that's why as soon as they get to this size, I, I would get them repotted. These are some that I did today, just prior to coming on, you see. Brilliant. Very good. Um, I have, Heather is asking, is the perlite mix, is that perlite mix in your pots? Yeah, I've, I've got a, a bit of both, but um, some of these haven't got any any perlite or um, vermiculite in at all. I've just done a little experiment using both this year, but um, previous years I haven't used it at all. And I'll be honest with you, I've not really found much of a difference with the, the ones that I've had using normal soil. This is one in just... Um, normal soil really there's a few remnants of the perlite in it but this is also one that's you know there's no perlite or vermiculite being used in it but what what the perlite and vermiculite does it, it helps with the drainage really but i i've tried them both this year and i haven't really found any any real difference in it so i wouldn't uh, if i was you to go out and buy it specially in it's only that i had it to hand that i thought well i'll I'll try and experiment with it, but there's, there is no need for it. I think for um, for people who are very new to blowing, actually, and and somebody has asked here, what you know, what's perlite or vermiculite? As as Karen said, it's you know, if you see some of his pots there, the way they had uh, like we white, um, like we white gritty bits in them, it's very so it's 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 a very light thing that growers very light that you can buy in a bag that you would add to help with drainage um but you know what i would rarely use it either and as karen said he's doing um you're doing experiments with with and without it so yeah i would i wouldn't bother running out and you know if you um you've got you need there to, to so don't don't worry about going out and buying stuff you don't need would be my advice mm. for that. Um, somebody, Marianne is asking, uh, what can you grow along with rhubarb in a grow bag? Um, I would say that rhubarbs are really, really hungry plant, actually, and that um, I, 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 if you have to grow it in a grow bag, and actually it's, you know, rhubarb would do, if you have a bit of a garden, and even you have a quite a shady bit, rhubarb would grow quite well in there. But if you have to grow it in a grow bag, give it one to itself. Yeah, the, the leaves are going to get too big as well. Yeah, really big pot because it's it's a really hungry plant. Actually, and you probably need to feed it as well, Marianne. Any any other questions? Don't be shy. You know, either ask or or type or um whatever i was just in terms of seeds and stuff um you know keeping seeds Karen. like most seeds will keep uh, usually but there are a few seeds that need to be really really fresh and i'm thinking about carrots yeah yeah seed really yeah um like um we said earlier i i tend to like to gather my own because i know how fresh they are but if, you know, you can't do that because you're first time, but maybe next year, you know, just leave a couple to, to go to seed and then that way you can harvest the seeds and they're not going to cost you anything next year. So that, that's the best way. But yeah, um, always check the packet. You know, if, if they're out of date, I, I wouldn't bother, especially like um, Jilly said with carrots, because they, they are very particular. Yeah. Uh, cabbages is the same isn't it um you know you have to have fresh seeds with cabbages as well yeah sure yeah sure um absolutely i so 
We have another question. We have questions coming. Joan asking, and it's not a silly question at all, Joan, but what's a grow bag? Basically, again, a grow bag is like a bag of compost, but thinner that you lay down on its side and then you would cut holes to put, um, say, two or three tomato plants or something in. So, um, but usually it's it's it holds less compost and is a bit cheaper than a bag of compost. Um, but yeah, don't, again, you don't, you know, don't, I, I don't, I would rarely use grow bags myself. Um, I try to get everything out into the ground if I possibly can, and then I have to water less. We have another question from Alison. Um, Alice, Alison's asking, uh, she's asking she would need to protect her dwarf fruit trees from frost, especially when they are in blossom. Um, or would she need to protect her dwarf fruit trees? Um, I've tried before, but I end up knocking the blossom off. I mean, I've got fruit trees and I've never really put any protection on them. Um, this, I put fleece on my strawberries, but um, not really the fruit trees at all or fruit bushes. Um, gooseberries they're, they're just sprouting now and some raspberry canes are just coming into bud as well but i, I wouldn't really do anything with them they they, they tend, to, tend to be pretty hardy themselves yeah i i would agree with that as well like i don't we grow a lot of fruit trees and bushes here and i would never protect them now that's not to say um some years you might get a wee late frost or something but um a Ground frost is probably all right, you know, um, but no, I think, as you say, you do more damage trying to protect them than um, than just leaving them there. If, you know, and if even if you set them up against, if I don't know if they're in pots or they're outside, but if they were in pots, you could set them up against the wall at the side of your house, maybe just for a wee bit of shelter. But but actually nature kind of knows best, doesn't it? Here. Yeah. Uh, Ronan's saying that BBC Radio Ulster do a very good gardening program on a Saturday morning at nine o'clock. Lots of useful tips. Yeah, it is. It is a good program. Um, Leanne is asking, with a few licks and beetroot still in the soil from last year, uh, we planted too many seeds at once. They look okay. Would they be edible? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. And if you didn't want to harvest them, leave them for seed and then put put your new ones in this year, but they, they would be perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I would definitely get a, get a wee harvest out there. Um, any other questions? I think that's all the ones now we've had from um, in the chat box. Any other burning questions before next week? Uh, I'll just, well, I, ha I have another, one other one, Karen. Um, actually, it is a wee bit difficult to get seeds at the minute because of Brexit and this, that and the other thing. Um, I have seen, you know, some of the supermarkets actually have got fresh supplies of seeds and stuff in. Um, and there's not, they're the same seeds you would buy probably in a garden centre, aren't they? You know, you yeah. buy a variety, but... They're probably good for for basic stuff. Where would you where would you get your? I know you save a lot of your own, Karen. But if you had to buy some, where would you get them? Well, somebody mentioned they got some really good um, compost from Little. I got some great onion sets from Little. Um, I just spotted them by by accident. Really, they had some lovely white, red, and brown onion sets. So it's it's better, good to just look around. You know, you'll you'll find them. Um, you could also go online. Yeah. An onion set is a baby onion, actually. Just, you know, yeah. rather than seed, you can speed the process up by, you can buy a bag of sets, like 20, they're just be baby onions that you plant instead. But, but and online, um, yeah, it's because some of the UK companies aren't, aren't sending seeds to Northern Ireland at the minute. Now I know this keeps changing and stuff, but um, I, there's, a website, um, the Organic Centre in Leitrim. I would use or brown envelope seeds as well, which again is in the south. Um, and 
GIY dot IE grow it yourself Ireland. They do a good variety of, of seeds. Um, so who oh we've got a question from Cheryl. Um, is it too early to plant the baby onions now? No, no. Um, like we were saying, if if you're planting them indoors, um, I'll be honest. I have put some. I put my potatoes in last week, and I put some onions in. The ones that I got from Lidl, I put them in as well. And I was out today, and I've seen them just emerging from the soil. So now's a good time to be putting your onions in. I'm just hoping that this snow doesn't put them off any. But they are just starting to emerge. But no, I'd put my baby tomatoes in, uh, to park tomatoes, baby onions in now. Okay, brilliant. Sow your seeds indoors now, but you could put your, your other ones outside if you've got a garden. If not, put them in a, a big plant pot, and put them in, your, um, in the corner of your kitchen or something like that. We, we were talking about growing indoors. I remember the, the best tomatoes I had was actually growing in a bathroom. And so, you know, from the shower, the steam from the shower, I never watered them at all, but they were the best tomatoes I had. I just fell out with the wife about them. <laughs> <laughs> we feel your pain, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as Cheryl has asked, is the whole onion in the soil? Uh, so that's actually, um, yeah, you, you would put them down so that just the tip is under the soil, wouldn't you, Karen? Yes, yeah. yeah. But they are they are quite baby. They're like the size of a marble, really. Not even of. Uh, depending on your age, you might know what a marble is. But but I know, yeah. I know where they are. They're I was just saying to I was going to ask my wife to go and get me one. I, I'm sure I've got a couple still, but. Oh right! If you, if you could bear with me for two minutes, I'll go and get them. Oh brilliant! Yeah, that'd be that'd be fantastic. That'll be something to leave on. So I think that the learning from this evening is, um, yes, open your packets. So some of your seeds, but not all of them at once. Um, you have plenty of time if you want to, if you want to start a few now and then in three or four weeks, go again. That's brilliant. Use um, your pots or whatever you have. Remember we talked about last week. Everything you buy comes in plastic packaging um, and stuff like, like um, these. As long as there's holes in the bottom, you can grow in anything really. They're actually, that's the stuff I had from last week. I think this was a mushroom container. So yeah, do, do what Karen does and, and fill the windowsills up with stuff and get, and get so on. Um, and hopefully we'll start to get some more consistently really nice weather as well which would be brilliant so we'll wait for uh, Mary Teresa said if anyone's interested I've come across a few seed swap group pages on Facebook um, give sell swap unwanted seeds and plants no apologies I haven't got them I took them into work but what I did find was um, one of the ladies I've been working with was telling me that her plants was very leggy yes um, especially her uh, tomatoes so i made a little box like this so i would put the the seeds and put them in and then put this on the windowsill mm -hmm. and it it stopped them being leggy because it, it's they weren't fighting for the sunlight anymore but this didn't cost me anything to make really it was just old foil and an old cardboard box. And when you say leggy, Kieran, that, that means that the stem grows really long. But yes. For the light, isn't that it? There's not really enough light. Um, do you my screen, my screen not, come on again. Do your neighbours not think you're a wee bit mad, Kieran? I don't have any. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking of the boxes and the and the tin foil and stuff. But it's it's the in-laws that think I'm mad and <laughs> until they're eating the produce, and then they think I'm great. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Well, look, guys, that's um, I think we've um, we've nearly come to the end. One last we've one last question from Leanne to say: Can we get uh, really get ripe tomatoes without a greenhouse? 
Yeah, like I said, I had them in the bathroom, and they they were they were the best tomatoes that I grew. Um, they were they were getting sunlight through the window, and they were getting moisture from the shower. So yeah, I I would persevere indoors. Or, or if you've got a sheltered um, p- a patio, even outside, you know, sunny, that's kind of quite sheltered or, or definitely, um, definitely worth trying, aren't they? Yeah, we, we mentioned about the coal frame. You know, all you need is a, a little structure that you could put a lot of plastic around. But you've got to remember that they're, they're going to get up to about three foot high. So, you know, that's that's all you need, really. Something that's going to trap the heat in and the sunlight. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well look, everybody, good luck with your sowing your seeds this this week or this weekend. Um and Karen will be back with us again next week. Um was it next Thursday? It's next Thursday actually yeah. Um it's next Thursday and then the next Thursday after that will be will be the final one so thanks a million everybody for thank for, you for joining in um fantastic that's great and um, we'll leave you now you can go and have a cup of tea or watch the telly or do whatever so uh so th- people are coming through saying thank you very much thank you to karen from the concert yeah, thank you for coming and thank you for your questions and we'll see you next week Brilliant. Thanks a million. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.